Hello, I'm John Proxy. Having a disco Elysium adventure. I'm having a conversation with Dolores Die, who Dor Dolores died like a thousand years ago. But I get the feeling you're not really Dolores Die. I don't know what you mean. Dolores Die looks at you quizzically. It does seem like a mystery she wants to get into. You're pointing your head. The morning? The morning, I don't understand. No, I meant... The morning, I'm grieving, but you're not even dead. Oh my god, Harry, stop. I don't want to hear anything about the morning. Morning, someone who's still alive, any of that. I can't do that anymore. I'm not 80 years old. 32. People my age are not supposed to mourn. Grieves out. Sounds more angry than a sigh. Or the X something. Wasn't I Dolores died just a second ago? Now I'm the X thing. You're confusing me. Look, I have to go to Lausanne Aerodrome at 10.20pm. I have a light rail to catch. She keeps glancing over her shoulders nervously. I haven't even bought the tickets yet. We all told you. Everyone warned you. Shut up. I'm talking to her. It's a problem. Look at what she's pouring out to you. Glad we're having this conversation. Glad, getting so much closer, closure. I'm glad too, but I have to go. My friends are waiting for me on the platform. I can't let them wait. It's impolite. Cool, your friends. Say hi to your friends for me then. I will, he says. The evening wind blows in and the gown wraps around her like a white flag. Second thought, George Dolores die. Queen regnant. Territories of Monday and Insulin Day, nothing else. Yes, Harry, I am. Things have gotten much better for me now that I am the ruler of the known world. She pulls up the sl silvery sleeve of her gown to check the time. Oh god, I, it's already so late. I have to go, Harry. A tiny golden wrist watch with red straps around her bony little wrist. That's not a very good way for things to be. It's not, but she looks at her feet. Golden, little golden sandals cover her toes. That's it. That's it, yes. He looks up from her toes. Talked about it a million times. You'll get over it, just like I did. People do. Things will get good for you again. Where? In hell? Stop, you're only making it worse for him. You're never going to help him with anything. Maybe I've reached the end of the investigation. See, our eyes are widen. It just takes some time. For you, I think it will take something like 20 years, maybe. It's hard for me, too. I used to think I couldn't live without you. She looks you straight in the eye. The iris is a light blue, flecked with green. But I can. Okay, then. Super okay. I still have other things I need to know. Whatever things she shakes her head. We've been through all the things, Harry. Don't go. I have to, Harry. Really, I've already missed the 8.30. Fingers wrap around the back handle. I'm gonna go now. Bye, sire. I cannot but love you. She has said so much a hundred times. Okay, I understand. Not silently. Like a martyr. No, you don't. You're just being a martyr. <laughs> Am I really going now? The time is up. We must be on the 10.20 flight returns. Will we ever see each other again? I won't see you, but you will see me. How can that be? Oh, Harry, this is a dream. Can't you see? I'm already in Mirova by now. Who knows how long this happened? How long ago this happened? She looks around a year, two, five years ago? How will I see you again? Right here, tomorrow night. Once this dream starts happening, it keeps happening. Three times a week, at least. Now, Harry, it really looks like it started happening again. It's the video rental. It's suffocatingly beautiful and young. I smell of tutti frutti fruit chewing gum, like I did that time when I asked you for forgiveness after leaving you for the first time so long ago. I like this. Oh yes, this is real darkness. Not death or war or child molestation. Real darkness has love for a face. The first death is in the heart, Harry. See you tomorrow.
Yes, it doesn't really matter because it's her dream and she knows it's a dream. Real quick, how's your sleep? Let's solve the fucking case. Are you sure you're okay? You're thrashed around and you bolted half covered in blood from your wound. Spit out the blood and get back to work, you bad ass that guy. Okay, you reply simply. Still worried. You must have really fast and squirreled in your sleep. Cool. Cut in a really weird place, didn't I? Let's get outside. I think it, yeah, so that happened like 20 years ago, I'm guessing. An old man wearing a tracksuit trou trousers leans on a frame stock of his rifle. He gathers a big ball of spit <coughs> in his mouth, spits it out at the ex extinguished fire before him. He raises his black eyes, hooded by creased eyelids. Mid yours, unclouded by cataracts, his eyes shy, sh sight is sharp. He's practically tearing up, tearing up from spite. Hatred got the better of him, best of him a long time ago. This man hates everything. You the fire, now? Huh? I can't hear you. Did you recently tell two kids to put their out their fire? Two twins. I may have. All sorts of little rats have come sniffing around, trying to give up the position. Oh. If he killed the person, then it's because it's because he's. He might not have anything to do with what we've investigated. He might have just shot somebody because of delirium. Position sounds like a Fire hiding place. Regressive bourgeoisie henchman can't even talk like a grown up. Bourgeoisie? You've retained your eyesight. My eyesight, yes. <clears throat> Helps me see all this shit. A shot of disgust passes. His right side, his left side remains motionless. Did you close the bar, I blast door? Did. And you opened it. How? I fueled the generator, then used the I console. I should have burned that console down. Makes his head. How did you know it was coming? Reactionary rock and roll music playing on the water. Fair enough. I told you we shouldn't play sad FM. It wasn't rock and roll, it was Sad FM. Sad FM, huh? I always hated that station. Phlegmatic, counter-revolutionary dirges. Sadness is a mental illness, a weapon of the bourgeoisie. The fascists were right about rock and roll. It is degenerate. Hip gyrating mental illness music. Well, this guy is very far gone. Nice it's not got there. nice, it's a piece of shit. Gets the job done. Is that a Belmar it's grave? It's a Dragon 446. Ah. Southeast Samaran made exotic. Must be defunct too. No modern rifle manufacturer of that name springs A Samaran around. rifle? How did you get hold of one? It was sent to us by our brothers in the Xinyao commune. Military aid. That's the rifle. It has stayed true to him. You can still make it sing. The Sing Yao commune? You heard me. It's good now. Like chalk wiped from a board. 
gaze turns inward. He's right, almost no one remembers there was a third metastasis of the world revolution in the Safray Empire, extinguished in 06. It's not wiped from the board, I they remember it. They wouldn't like hearing their name coming from your mouth. A damn dog. Time will... Uh, the time will come to win his trust, comrade. It's not now. We'll need to take care of the gun first. Move the police, you can keep the gun. Keep it down. Not one move. No. And the, the lieutenant aims his pistol square at the man's head. Put it down says, now, sir. Or you're going to blow my brains out before you question me. To hell with it. It's a walking stick anyway. It's out of bullets. The old man lays the rifle down carelessly and looks at it lying there. He stares on, his wrinkled mouth moving like, uh, moving without a sound, a strange sadness like a song. What did you the say? The future teaches you to be alone. Present. The present. Be afraid and cold. The old man pulls back the hood of his plastic cape and looks up to the sky. It's blue-gray, the same color as the sea. Those words, the future teaches you. Real music, real pole cult. He nods. That's that's la revolution, not your rock and roll misanthropy. Chasson de soldat, the black and whites, marching song. I know la revolution is the marching song of the world revolution. There you go. Eyes remain fixed on the sky as he sides and adds. On a three. I'm glad they sang Brave Children, favourites of history. The Hing Sa Yao. Sorry. Sin Yao, it was. He struggles to remember. Uh, some samurai shit, I guess. That rather surely, yeah. I've heard that name somewhere else in a dream. If one has, they named a fucking perfume after it. No, that's not it. I've talked to her. Talk to her, he raises his bushy brow and looks down in the sky, right into your bloodshot eyes. Yes, in the church. Old shit house, he chortles. Should have taken it down the way they did in Grad, dismantled it for firewood. All around you, the air slowly circulates the islet, carrying little swallows and black beaked seagulls in slow drift. They're all, every one of them. Every ma bird, mammal, and crustacean. What? Dead distance. How does it go? The song. How did it go? Looks at his gun on the ground and shakes his head slowly. Something about shooting rabbits? I don't know. I can't remember. It doesn't matter. It's gone now. He waves erratically. His hand, annoyed that he can't remember. Little tremor passes through him. It was dear to him. He resents forgetting it. Pick up this gun lying in the sand. His gaze follows your motions. The rifle feels surprisingly light in your hand. Rim stopped and patched in place with tape and wire. Still warm from his parched hands, not the metal. Metal is ice cold. This weapon has been modified several times. Inspect it closer. The rifle's in a shabby state, like a crutch that's seen too much travel. Hieroglyphs in it are embossed into the forearm made of walnut. In the butt you see a vestmentine writing, burnt into wood. Triangong, 4.46mm. Made in Hin Sin Yao. So as he said, Stragon, made in Sin Yao. No one said it has to be a Bel Margrave. The lieutenant does not take his eyes off the old man. We were just guessing. On ballistics too, it could have easily been a tri Triangon too. It doesn't matter if it was made in Ch Chianth. Chianth. All it has to do is use jacketed ammunition, and it does. This uses jacketed ammunition 4.46. The right type and the right calibre. Lieutenant nods, glancing at the gun. He's liking this. The rifle's been patched and modified several times. I wonder how old it is. The old man does not answer, he just stares in front of him. Stow the gun. 
Or he might have been in one of those villages that they massacred. The old man keeps following your motions with his gaze. Right arm twitches suddenly. Some kind of involuntary response. Something is slightly off of his motoritic motorics. Looks very much like a murder weapon. Can be used against him to get a confession from time. Who are you? My name looks across the water and then back at you. It's Yosef Linovich Dross, political commissar of the 114th Anti Aircraft Division, the 4th Army, the Commune of Revachal. I'm a deserter, a partisan, a prisoner of war. This is my terminus surrender. His eyes turn to the reeds again, dead and dull. Commune of Revachal. Lieutenant forgets to close his mouth. You mean the ICM? The holdover from the from, from the Insulidian Citizens Militia? The Army of the Revolution. I was recruited in Jan Rock in 07. Trained in the École de Contrôle Arien and consigned to the emergency defence duties in 08. I left my unit on the eve of the landing. When I returned here on May the 14th, the Commune had fallen. Still armed and ideologically trained, I wrote criticism of myself and resumed partisan duties. Been on this island for 43 years. No. He looks into the fire. A wisp of smoke rises from somewhere between charred logs. I've been on other islands too. I was on the Resurrection until they turned it into a spa and at 18. Then I was on the E 48, a nameless sound, until the sea washed it over. Then I came back here. That was, he thinks, 22 years ago. You've been hiding here for 43 years. 43 years and 10 months. I don't even know what that is. It's inhuman. It's sick. On how humans should live. But I had to. He grimaces, clearly in pain. I couldn't just forget. I couldn't just forget what I saw. I like the idea that Harry got all caught up in this being a big mystery. And it's just some guy from a war. That just didn't end for him. And he may have seen a soldier, perhaps. What have you been doing all this time? Hiding, fishing, waiting. Looks across the water. But the afternoon grows late. On the rue to Saint Gislain, people walk home. Street lights will soon be lit. Over inland, the streets are alive with workers, men, women, children, street hawks, and migrant labourers. The temperature is steady. Alter cumulus clouds form above Precinct 41. Always waiting. The old man turns his eyes from the shore back to you. For what? I had to return. Ah, who? Girl Child Revolution. Huh? Better come. I too have given my life to Mazovian social economics. A waste. Blinks in his black eyes. The material base for the uprising has eroded. Working class has betrayed mankind and themselves. The historic opportunity for revolution has passed. Will not come back anymore, however hard I try, whatever I do. You said you deserted your unit. I was just 16 years old, 15 when I was volunteered. In a lapse of faith, plays this vote, and courage through. And courage too, a lapse of faith. You could say I misunderstood the historic role of the proletariat, and thought the Mazovian social economics was fallible. The second, I doubted the irreducible laws of historic materialism. The second is all it took. For what? A reaction to take hold. It wasn't reaction, you were just afraid. It's the same thing. You haven't seen it. Not really, not naked. Impossible not to be afraid. It remains unclear what it is. He makes leaps he just doesn't expect you to follow. And this was when. Lieutenant instinctively looks through his notebook, but does not take it out. May, May the 13th, 08, 44 years ago. Looks north. The horizon was black with coalition airships. The petroleum rose to the sky and it looked like it formed the clouds. Storm clouds when they started shelling. It was dark magic. Dark magic. The combined might of the international capital. All at once. All the greed and terror in the world tore into Revachol. Lifted streets from the ground. Turned houses into ghosts. We were in the flak tower. Gestures towards it. Huddled on the floor. Artillery was 80 kilometers away in ozone, but I knew, I knew the commune would fall, we would all be turned into ash. So I said I was going to map the room. 
He looks east, going to the map room. Then I ran. I climbed the chain link across the water and hid inland. In the bunkers underground, like the weakest of the weak, a mouse, frightened of the ordnance all night, the sound of rotors in the morning, whirring. <laughs> looks to, at the sky. What was that? Airships. I climbed out, closes his eyes into hell. The landing was complete. The chain was submerged. I had to swim back. Fortress was half submerged too. Chattered. They all drowned in the lower levels, but torn to shreds above. The anti-aircraft gun had malfunctioned. So had I. I left them without ideological direction. He opens his eyes, stares right through you. It was real. I'd seen it. I'd seen it in reality. Some kind of great terror. Worse than you'd ever seen. Seen what? The mask of humanity fall from the capital. It has to take it off to kill everyone. Everything you love. All the hope and tenderness in the world. It has to take it off. Just for one second. Do the deed. And then you see it. As it strangles the beats of your friends to death. The sweet, most courageous people in the world. It's silent for a second. You see the fear and power in its eyes. And then you know. What? The bourgeoisie are not human. I've always suspected the same. Now is not the time, Lieutenant Yefator. Lieutenant says gently. I had to. I had to fight it. Here, please don't be crazy. We're dealing with different. I could not stop it anymore. The old man falls silent. Black eyes keep piercing your skin as he looks some great distance behind you, shaking his head slowly. Treating from it. What is this place? This island? It's not an island to act. He looks around. It's a defensive fortification for the commune of Revachol. I am its last surviving, surviving defender. What was it used for? Congeniality. What? Formed King Philip II? Oh, yeah, they built it to restrict access to the Bay of Revachol. Captured it in O2, retrofitted the fort with eight anti air guns to fend against the airborne landing. Against the whole world. You mean the landing? Retaking of Revachon. Coalition of military called it Operation Death Blow. He winces. I later found out on the radio they called it Death Blow. But one of them, tell me, who speaks like that? We had 50 million people on Kalau alone. I know what you mean. You don't know. You haven't seen it. He shakes his head slowly. I bliss. I bliss. Black eyed angel, he nods. Shaitan. Or a darkened one. Satan. Shaitan. So, like, these are all vaguely based on real life things, so. But Shaya. Shaitan is where we get Satan from. Have you survived all this time? But does anyone survive? He looks at his worn running shoes. They steal. Now hold on there. What do you steal? Supplies, vegetables, he winces. I collect rainwater. It's the life of a dog, not a human being. He coughs once more. Puts his hand on his belly. How's your health, Mr. Dross? Been throwing up blood since winter. Red like beet root. Passing in the stall too. He does seem frail, gone for his age, more like 75 than 65. Double putting on weight could mean cancer. The RCM can provide medical our services. We need to be looked over. I need to die. A droll smile stretches across his mouth. You don't have the medical facilities, you have guns. That's all they give you. Oh, guns. We have drama, mine. Uh, and other opioid based painkillers. You must be in pain. Light goes through his eyes. He smacks his dry lips. I have been running out of that stuff. I mean, I just took a bunch from him. This is a serious situation. You need to be looked over and we can do it. There's nothing to look over. The triage is in. It's black. Administer morphine. Moribund. Have you coped mentally? I haven't. Holes in my brain. Ears missing. Others filled with pain only. A decade of... Eyes rolled into his skull and back. I don't even know what. Inferno? I also have holes in my brain. Point to your head. 
No wonder. All your minds are rotting from radio waves. Nods towards Martinez. I watch the terrors of the city turn the lights back on. More and more each year. Ruins glittering in the dark like a fucking merry-go-round. It's disgusting. He looks down at his shoes. His face parched from the sun and wind. There's a hint of pain in there somewhere. They're not heartbroken. How could they have moved on? How have you concealed yourself all these years? It was hard in the tens, shakes his head. Didn't have the partisan training. They were searching for stragglers, whose bloodhounds closed his eyes. Floodlights on the water at night. No posters, campaigns. The communards still hoped that they needed to snuff that hope out. The east capitulated. Martinez and Cold City were turned to dust. But south for Jamrock, Harburg, even Curon, Boogie Street, of course. Those fucking kips had Mazov coursing through their veins. And others, some cordons of Revachol were still fighting. There were cells, I tried to contact them. Shakes his head, then they all went silent. Frequency's dead. How did you get between here and the mainland? At night, I used a dinghy. He nods towards the deflated tire in the reeds. I only went after dark then. When I got to the city, I stayed underground. Patrols, you lot, the commons, started snitching. In the city, you move underground. From bunker to bunker, he nods. Not anymore. No one cares now. Don't even have to hide. They think I'm another antisocial vagrant. I could just walk straight into the town if I wanted. I just fall silent. His gaze fixed on the shacks huddled together across the water. Why don't you just walk then? I don't want to. We're all traitors. Pigs, rabbits and dogs. Men without ideals are only animals. Does not want to see life moving on. People forgetting. Drinking, laughing. Weapons cache, cache under the St. Glishleen, Gislain 22B, point to it, in the basement. Have you been there? He looks at you, then pulls the raincoat tight around his neck. But you finally, finally found it. There must have been a small squadron's worth of arms in there. All the graves, right? They were damaged beyond use. I know. You've been there. Sleeping, he coughs. Some nights, ammo scrounging on others. Those my graves were shit even before they were corroded. Some had bullets in the chamber, however. Feel the dots connecting, little dots on the map you walked across. There's a small bunker under the Feld building. Have you stayed there? The propaganda bunker? He coughs. I used to, not anymore. A okay, propaganda bunker? He stored leaflets there, broadcasting equipment, made broadcasts, I think. Propaganda posters. I buried them with their leaflets. They killed themselves. Two young boys. Killed themselves? A lot of our boys did. I spent some time, some winters there. Never liked it. Fuck. It's been like 30 minutes. No idea. Kept thinking of them. He stares at the ruins of the Feld building. No need to go underground anymore. It's better than the ruins on the ground. Do you smoke Tium Materi cigarettes? I do. He coughs. I smoke them on the mainland. Once the land ends. The good? He nods. Plenty of tar. I like that boy in the pack too. Reminds me of last century. Tell me another thing. The old man looks across the water at the city, the ruins, the motorway rising above it. You said this was your termless surrender? You were the RCM, he waves in your general direction. Coalition approved mob and enforces bourgeoisie morals in Revachol. I know what it looks like, but I have a secret plan to turn the RCM into a Mazovian revolutionary unit. Rock and roll posturing. He stares at the embers and into your eyes. You're the RCM. You represent the Moralist International, the enemies of humanity, took the city, and I represent their adversary, the Party Communist. Dinsilende. Uh, Take me to them as a prisoner of war. I have relinquished my weapon. I can no longer serve. No superiors can relieve me of my duty. I will bulldoze them all to ma the mass grave for trying to free humanity. His hand shakes and he breaks into a coughing fit. Smear of blood from his mouth on the black charcoal of the fire pit. Mene, the royalist on the coast, said, You never signed the rebel Trolian instrument of surrender. Liberal reactionaries signed that instrument. Traitors, who should have been burned alive. Yours breath, I answered to the Communist Party. Is that part of why you've been here all this time? Just because the party didn't surrender. He wipes his blood from his chin. Understood. I don't think you did. 
He stares at the fire pit. You live in a delusion. Radio shows, speed racing, and sporting goods. It's not real. Are you a communist soldier from the communist army? No, I'm not a soldier. I'm an ideological officer. I belong to the party, not the army. But you were trained and assigned to the Defence Corps. Trained, he nods, in a historical materialism and assigned as a political commissar by the party. These things used to mean something. Wait, what does a political commissar do? The old man does not answer. He tilts his silver head and looks at the reeds. You see a small tremor pass through his legs. The lieutenant speaks softly. His job was to assure the army's answers to civilian control and follow the ideological ideology of the commune. Scientific communism. Tracksuit clad old man is suddenly reanimated. Commissar Politique, the knight philosopher of the revolution, future human. Awakened from the shutdown by the promise of ideology. That means you're a trained communist, right? He nods slowly, then another tremor. I'm also a communist. No, you're not, he coughs. You're a liberist. Liberast. What's a liberast? Liberal and a pederast. It's what most liberals are. I'm not a liberal. I told you I'm a communist. Detective, the lieutenant gives you a stern look. We have not come here to discuss ideolo ideology. He turns to the old man. We've come here asking questions regarding a murder investigation. The old man spits into the fire pit. He does not say anything more. Jitter passes his lower body. I have another serious question for you. What have, been, what have you been using this gun for? I've used it for killing people. Here we go, a trail of blood. Lieutenant smells it too. Killing people? It's a gun. That's what they're for. You want moralist euphemism? Defending your family with your property? I haven't done that. I used it to kill people. Interesting, the lieutenant nods. During or after the war? There is no after the war. He shakes his he head and smiles. The teeth rotten black. Our war is never over. He's continued killing after the hostilities ended. Okay, okay. No, he didn't say that. Just... This is it. You can feel it. Like battery acid on the tip of your tongue. Something you haven't felt in a while. But what? This is what you live for. This is the shit. Great serotonin jackpot. A solution. No in straight. No euphemisms. Doesn't like those. No, no. Be careful now. Slow and steady does it. I can repeat it first. Don't mess this up. Remember, he wants to tell you. Get personal. Are you saying you killed people after active fighting stopped? What did I just say? He keeps shaking his head erratically, suddenly, brushes something out of his eye. Did you use that gun to shoot and kill a colonel of the security contractor, Krenel? Who now? He leans in and cups his ear. He heard you, he just wants you to say it again. There's dramatic flair on his part. My choice, we do it. Do it, sire. fascist death squad who took a bullet in the mouth on the night of night of March the 4th oh yes that one he looks up at the sky and clacks his tongue a big piece of work that boy did you kill him lieutenant takes a sudden step towards him and the son of a welder an officer of the commune of Revachol he spits a big one at the lieutenant's feet do not collaborate with murderers and pederasts of the liberal regime. Exhaust him with proof. Pile it on him. Get a confession. The gun. The murder, murder weapon is the perfect weapon. A scent of blood in the air. But what else? Or something you can't remember. To think about tracks. Suddenly all those tracks are confusing. Go with something else first. Come on, what am I forgetting? Hit yourself on the side of the head. Wait, here it comes. Goddamn Maybells. Dried Maybells on Clashay's roof. Oh yes! There were Maybells in the grass when you got here. And the Maybells on Clashay's balcony. Wait, don't forget the footprints. Diagonal prints in the dust. 
The secret space behind Clashay's bedroom. Now, we've got to come up. Of course, thank you, Head. Thank you. Got it. Remember, the blueprints were like no modern soul. Ah. Oh. Hey, Pels. Behind the victim's window, I saw them growing here. Point to them. Damn, Maybells. He looks at the blossoming field. Our highland is turning white with them. It seems tender suddenly. Nostalgic, even. Strange mood swing. So many this year, too. Spring is coming. Now it's already here. Wash the filth away. I haven't seen these flowers anywhere else in Martinez. Only here. They blossom on the islets before. Fertilized them with our blood. Looks at the water. Resurrection was snow white and grey. In May, before they ruined it. South Bay of Martinez is dotted with little freckles of islets, turning greens, white flowers and white snow. Coat two. Or they piled their containers on top of it, filled with broken useless trash. The fat fingered bourgeoisie children to play with. Must get around a lot. To stay undetected all these years. The lieutenant's voice is soft, friendly. Do you know any secret path? Pinball workshops. Oh, Kim's on the case. I may. Curious tremor passes his space. I've forgotten how to talk. A young woman named Clashe. Ring any bells. Flowers like these were behind her window. Clashe. He knows her, but he hasn't heard the name. Yes, Clashe. You hadn't heard her name, had you? My ears don't reach the city. You know her, right? She had intimate relations with the victim, the mercenary. With the victim, he turns his sight from the whitening field of flowers, all silent, and the muscles in his jaws twitch, spasm. There's a small tremble. Looks like a smile. A crooked smile. It isn't quite voluntary. It's about to burst. Almost. Need one more. Just one. Maybe two. I wonder what brand of boots you're wearing. Everything is brand to you individualists. Who cares what brand my shoe is? Sansa. <laughs> yeah, like, I do care about brands, clearly. He looks at his running shoes, covered in mud. Some shit. Show me the soles, please, Mr. Joss. Fucking imbecile. The old man stretches out his leg. Black and white spiral pattern covers the sole of the worn-out old running shoes on the, his feet. The marker is called Sansarique. You see that V-shaped logo. Can't make out the size. These are not... The unusual horizontal pattern soles you saw in the dust on the floor of the hidden room. They do, however, seem to be about the same size. So they could be worn out. Size fits, but not the sole. Wait, maybe it's simpler than that. So he doesn't have to be wearing them right now. People change shoes. Doesn't mean you weren't there. Near the room the victim died sneaking around. Racking those brains, are you? He squints at you, black pearls gleaming with hatred. Desperate to report something back to your masters. You must have really loved that dead fuck. Lieutenant gives you a quick slideways glance and nods to an acknowledge. The prints were his. You can see it in those eyes. You can't keep them from flickering, looking for something. The old man stares at his own prints in the ash around the fire. Silent suddenly. A strange process within him. A gush of wind. Seagulls in the distance. Oh, going to crack, but you need a little bit more. You've done the ballistics. Point, the shot came from this island. I saw you poking around there, looking for evidence. You're damn diligent when it comes to the dead fasces. Jitter passes him. Did you like the view? You had a direct visibility. There was embrasures in the concrete, specifically meant for top follower to use. You had a long-range rifle in your possession. The lieutenant softens his voice. You've been here a long time, Mr. Dross. Too long. Clearly need medical aid. I'm ready to die. Man interrupts him, then coughs. Done my part. He's practically admitting to it. Dead fascist, the fascist. Done his part. It's the best uninterrupted line of sight into the window in all of Martinez. Because it's a sniper's nest, you stupid fuck. Radio Gosh is right. You have worms in your brain. Another sudden twitch, then one more in his right eye. Leaves no stone unturned. Get him what matters most. 
I don't need your cooperation, I've got this. Iron Gong 446. Ah. Not a lot of guns around here that use military grade ammunition, are there? It's a real gun, you points your sidearm. Not like your little musketeer pistol. I've seen you prance around with that, jumping hoops for the liberals. You look like imbeciles. Why don't you ask them to give you real weapons? You turtles. Going against automatic rifles with those toy guns. Of course you've got their locals' boys killed. Damn, he saw you. He wants it to happen. He would have had a good view of the tribunal from here. It's not just empty boasting. He saw you, okay. So what? Don't let it divert you. Stop changing the subject. We have the murder weapon. Point to it. You know what? The lieutenant looks at the weapon demonstratively. You're right. I'm convinced this made the shot. Should we call it? Do you think we have the murder weapon? 4.46 jacketed ammunition. Modified range. Lists. We have it. This is it. I'm calling it. We have the murder weapon. Good. The lieutenant takes out his notebook and draws a single line. It feels good, doesn't it? Tying things up like this. When you have the murder weapon, you have the killer. Murder? The old man does not say more. He just glances onto the reeds and twitches once more. Sudden, he suddenly jerks to life. You know who he was? A coalition trained murderer, armoured and armed. He wasn't human. The blunt end of a, of a hammer, dripping with blood. He was a rapist? I'm not saying he didn't deserve it. Beating us to the ground, moaning with joy. Breathed in with a strange animation. You hounds get so thorough with a company trained killer dies. I haven't seen you on the coast for 40 years. You know, maybe I should have killed one sooner. Got your attention. Looks you dead in the eyes, pupil shaking. Now you stop beating druggies and prostitutes in your basement. Now you come to investigate. Not when they die by the hundreds. He breathes through the flared nostrils. This is it. Shot him. Shot him. Say shot him. Not killed him. You shot him. Oh, the inhumanity. Closes his black eyes. One pallor military lesson revachol. You can almost see him squeeze the tear out of his eye. Fists begin to tremble from anger. Lieutenant raises his right arm to hush you. Our lieutenant listens, holding his breath. Hold your breath. I had them in my sights. Both of them. Him and the whore. I was breathing with them. In phase. I pulled the trigger. And flew on the air until I, it, I landed in his mouth. He begins to smile. I didn't think I had a shot like that in me anymore. I did. I saw him kneel there, his mouth full of death, a stupid look on his face. The smile quivers, his dick still in there. Then what? Nothing. I went to sleep. Next morning the, there were May bells everywhere. The world was white. But what's left of it anyway? My last spring here. I knew the fascists would come to avenge their own. So they did. The lieutenant just looks to him for, for one, maybe two seconds, and breaks the silence. Mr. Dross, are you aware you are confessing to a murder? Yes. A single word is all he gives. The lieutenant takes out his notebook slowly, very slowly. And you were looking at them. A victim and a young woman having sex with the scope of your rifle at that night before you shot him? The old man nods. Why? Because that's what they were doing. He shrugs and smacks his lips. The motive. This is where the motive is going to come from. You can coax it out of him. The tenant's preparing the ground. I don't understand. He turns to you. Do you do uh, detective, I don't understand this part. Why were you looking at them at night? I'm always looking. He cocks his head to the side. Uh, oh, we're at the end of the episode, aren't we? Another tremor passes his right side, lower in intensity. Are you always looking for the scope of a rifle? Explains, I'm just trying to understand. A rifle scope has the best magnification. Helps them see all the shit. And, you, and if you don't like it... If it's part of the shit you see, then you pull the trigger? Yes. He looks at the lieutenant in the eye. Think of it as a form of critique. 
We will not stop now. These dialectical materialist types never do. Exploit it. I am going to stop here. Uh, I don't actually know if there's enough material for another episode. I guarantee there's at least 45 minutes left in this game. So I'm going to let you go, but uh, I might glue. I might suddenly have more. You know, if there's only 10 minutes left, I'll just glue it to the end of this. So assuming there isn't, I'm going to let you go. I've, you're now leaving the Proxy. I've been John Proxy. Uh, thank you for watching my Disco Elysium adventure. I'll see you guys next time.